Hi everyone, good evening from the UK. I've just finished watching the Crypto Cup action and I've got a great Blitz game to bring you here. So this is Armageddon Chess, which means Ali Reza with the white pieces has to win. Anish Giri with black only needs to draw, something he's very good at, the joke now goes, because of all the uh, draws he's made down the years. Now, they drew all four of their rapid play games. That took them to two blitz games. They were both drawn, so that's why it went to an Armageddon. Now, just before I get into the chess here, I do want to have a quick rant about a couple of things. So yesterday I did a video on Hans Niemann, and after I'd recorded the video, done the thumbnail, everything was about to post, then I just happened to see that interview he did afterwards where he just did that one-liner, um, the chess speaks for itself, I think he said, um, when the interviewer was asking him about his win against Magnus, and I just really didn't like that. I just found it arrogant and, yeah, I don't know, rude to the interviewer, everything like that. So I just didn't rate that comment, that attitude at all. I know he also swore about the computer meltdown misfunction thing. I get the frustration and everything, but again, there's kids watching. We want to get all sorts of everyone into chess. So anyway, that's just my personal take on it. It kind of annoyed me. It's taken him down a bit in my estimations as a caliber of player, to be honest. Um, so I just want to get that one out of the way because I did the video yesterday. Uh, and then secondly, the commentary. So I really liked the commentary actually by Peter Leko and Tanya Sachdev. I was watching some of the stuff with Howl and um, Ginger GM and so on, and it was okay. But for example, in the second Ali Reza Blitz game, they just kept going on, oh, who do you think is going to win for about two minutes into the game? I got so bored, they weren't actually talking about the chess. Then I watched the Leko version from the start with Tanya Sachdev, and they were just actually talking about the chess. Leko was giving such good insight. You know, he's a phenomenal player. So that was just so much better for me. Anyway, those are my rants over, chess gossip aside. Let's have a look at this game here. So Ali Reza had white, he kicks off with his favorite e4. Now we go down to Roy Lopez here, I think a great choice. This is his bread and butter, he knows it inside out. And we follow this line here, which he played in the second blitz game as well, when he had the white pieces. So we go down one of these anti-martial positions here. So white commits this pawn on d3 very early. Now in the main line kind of um, Roy Lopez is you get rookie one, c3 first to prepare an immediate d4. Black can then strike early with d5. This is the martial gambit, you give up e5. So white players have been looking for a way to play against the martial, they don't want draws. d3 is one of these tries. So d6 from Giri, c3, castles, h3 from Ali Reza, all standard stuff. Now Anish brings this bishop to b7, so this is a key thing about the structure. He's not putting it on e6 in these lines. This is how he wants to play. And now in the first game, Ali Reza here went rook to e1, then there was knight a5, and then bishop c2, then Giri went c5. But here we have a different kind of position. It's very subtle stuff. But he goes a4 instead. We still get knight a5, but this time the bishop doesn't tuck back on c2. It goes to a2 here. So already a different kind of game. Giri carries on with c5 here. Now the knight comes to a3. Again, very different. We saw this standard kind of d2, f1 maneuver in the first game. Now you pressure this pawn here. You're about to capture twice. You don't want to kick on like this. You give up c4. So instead the queen came to d7, protects this pawn. And now Ali Reza goes bishop to g5. Again, a nice positional idea that Leko was explaining. You know, sometimes you're giving up bishop for knight here, and then this one is rerouting like this, heading for d5, etc. So we had b takes on a4 now, and this move looks very anti-positional when you first see it. And again, Leko gave some very interesting insights. He said that Tomaszewski was the first one he remembers playing this move. And there's actually a kind of positional idea to it, even though it looks anti-positional. You want to sink a knight on b3, supported by the pawn, and then you're killing this really dangerous bishop. So the knight now came to h4. Good move from Ali Reza. He's going all out on the king side. He wants f4. And this is where Giri just plays a bit too slowly. So the best move here when you run this with the engines is this weird looking knight d5. But it's a common idea when you've got these bishops staring at each other. Because after bishop captures, you hop back with the knight. And okay, you can go f4, this sort of thing. 
But here, at least, black's getting some kind of play. You know, after, say, pawn d5, you're liberating. You're protecting your king side a bit better. You've already removed this awkward knight. So this was the way to go. But knight d5 wasn't played. Giri goes rook to b8, but it's a bit of a nothing move. I mean, you hit the half-open file, but given you want to sink knight b3, followed by pawn captures blocking the file anyway, well, it doesn't serve so much purpose. So the knight now hits f5. Giri decides to drop this bishop back so he can maintain some protection here. Not forced, but okay, that's what he does. Now we had f4. Giri takes, and you can take with the bishop, also a very strong move, but the rook recaptures here. Now we had knight b3, and you know, Giri just plants that one in now. You've got one, two, three pieces all around the black king, plus a fourth gunning down here. So he wants to get rid of that one. Pawn recaptures, and now this is important. You don't take the pawn. You just give so much play for this rook, etc. So queen f3 played, um, Giri, I was going to say. Ali Reza brings his pieces towards the king side. He wants to start attacking. And now this is really a great move by Anish. So there's a threat here to actually take on g7. After king recaptures, you can take this knight. You've got this battery lined up. And if you go queen e6, this is a mistake. Because then there's this great move, bishop to h6, just ripping open the king. A kind of Kasparov-like move. He used to love giving up minor pieces for pawns, blasting open the king. And if you capture here, well, this is the trick. You slide the queen across. You're about to give mates using the knight. You know, you'd have to block, start giving up pieces. Awful. If you sidestep here, or sorry, if you go knight to e8 to block, well, then you can slide the rook across, g6. You can win an exchange at the very least. So queen e6 would have been a blunder, but knight e8 by Anish. Great defensive move, best in the position. So the bishops come off. This one recaptures, and now after queen g3, well, f6 is achieved. You've clamped on e5, you've opened some lateral defense. So nice combination of the pieces there by Giri. So the rook now doubled on the f file. The bishop came to c8, logical remaneuver by Giri. So after this knight now came into c4, he goes queen b7. So he's opening up this bishop to look here, maybe exchange off one day. That's a very dangerous knight. And this is a dual purpose move, now supporting d5 at the right moment. So the knight now came to e3, looks at this square, bishop e6 played. Now this uh, rook here nudged back to f3, just opens up the eyes of the queen a bit more, you know, prophylaxis stuff. By the way, there's no increment either. So you can see the clock times on screen. You have to keep moving here. And now a5 from Anish, great move. So he's seeking counterplay on the queen side. And Ali Reza does have to take this one seriously. If it gets down to here and here, you know, that's real counterplay. So the rook already slides across, stops a4, hits the pawn. Giri defends that one, and now Ali Reza goes d4, excellent move, throwing more fuel on the fire here, and Giri goes wrong. Now you're not going to see this stuff so deeply in Blitz, right? But he shouldn't take straight away. Actually better would have been chopping off this knight here, because if rook recaptures, well now you can take and you're opening the c-file. This is real counterplay, I mean I know the knight covers for the moment, but you're really generating play here. D5 could be coming at the right moment. And if you take with the knight instead, well, then you can go G6. If the knight moves away, will we take here, similar position. And if instead you leave that knight where it is using the pin, well, okay, now say you sidestep with the queen, uh, king, we can block with the knight. So you're forcing this knight to make a decision. Then we can start resolving this tension. This was kind of the way to go. But Giri didn't see this. Instead, he takes immediately but now these knights just really start hopping. So the knight hops back, hits the bishop, it tucks into f7, but now knight d5, look at that beautiful outpost, hits the queen, and also there's some threats to take here, you know, using the pins, you've got the rook here, the queen down here, that pawn is pinned here, you can't go queen e7, so Giri just eliminates this one, the pawn recaptures, and then he goes queen c5, rounding up the pawn, and the way Ali Reza responds here is just really classy. So there is a pin right now, his king's not on the best square, so he tucks it away. Yes, he gives this pawn, but now rook f5 is the follow-up. So not only do you cover the e5 square, no queen trades for you, Mr. Giri, 
Well, now after this one moves, you pick up a pawn. And so Ali Reza's only a pawn down here, but he's got all the pressure, just what you want when you need to win. You're in a must win game. So the rook could be slamming down on the seventh. This one covers that threat. Now knight f5. Once again, the knight just hits an amazing square. You're threatening to check, win the queen. The pawn is pinned. So king h8 played. Now rook e1 hits that open file. g6 kicks the knight. Knight d4 finds another amazing home. You're looking in here. So knight g7 covers. You know, really ugly position for Giri. Very tough to play. And after queen f3, just probing, looking down here, looking here. d5 shuts the door on the queen, gains some space. But now rook a6. You created this new weakness along the sixth when you moved that pawn. And here Giri just cracks. He blunders. What's he got? 40 seconds on the clock. He said in the interview afterwards, you know, I had to keep moving or I knew I'd just get flagged. He's quite good at bullet, this guy. And they're basically just in a bullet game here. So he goes rook b8, covering this pawn from the knight. But bang, just completely forgetting about this one. And now the whole position is just absolutely collapsing. So queen g8 played. Now rook f1. Now this rook covered the back rank. You know, there could be a threat down here. We had the knight. Oh, yeah, I should say. So it covered the back rank, stopping this one. But yeah, pure blunder. And now the whole thing is just unraveling. Knight c6 picks up the exchange. Knight f5 takes here, takes here. And when I was watching this live, I was thinking, oh, you can just win a pawn, can't you? And then I thought, oh, no, you can't win a pawn. Then there's knight e3. But I completely forgot, no, you can't win a pawn because then you lose your queen. This is the classic stuff that people like me, other amateurs will do. We maybe build up a good position for 40 moves and then you just blunder your queen away in one move, right? I've done that way too much this season. Anyway, uh, so g4 played by Ali Reza. He doesn't blunder his queen in one move. So he's kicking this knight away. Nice move by Giri now. Queen d8 hits this rook. So if you take here, we take here. Black's fine. Back in the game. So Ali Reza just moves the rook here. Excuse me, running out of breath. Now the knight drops back to g7. Rook to e5 comes, so hitting this pawn, and it's just all collapsing here. You know, if you come up here, for example, trying to protect while you're leaving your back rank, this is really a horrible, horrible knight. Can't come here, can't come here. So queen d6 played. Ali Reza rounds up another pawn. Queen c7, you can't trade queens, you have to keep tricks alive. And Ali Reza basically just cajoles the queen now. You know, he keeps covering the king here, gets these major pieces back around, makes sure there's no way to break through. Giri gets this kind of pseudo threat going, and actually it's his downfall. So after a few more moves here, queen b8 check, king moves, queen c8, rook f1, king g8. Now after rook d4, here Giri actually just plays another blunder, but okay, nine seconds on the clock, no increment. He goes bang, takes on c3, thinking, hey, you take, I take, check, brilliant, pass pawn. But actually the problem is, well, you don't have to take here. You can check down here. Here Giri resigned, you're actually running into checkmate. If you move here, uh, oh no, you can't move there, sorry. No, if you block with the knight, then you're, then you're getting mated like this. Um, game's completely over wait this isn't checkmate is it here there we go checkmate so there giri resigned so a fantastic game by ali reza well done to him nice to see him taking the match finding a bit of form in this blitz game i hope you enjoyed this one if you want to subscribe to the channel never miss a future video do see below do consider membership if you haven't yet already some great perks there play some blitz chess with myself if you're interested in that some coaching stuff too and see another amazing video click here. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon.